Welcome back. Excited to be here with you today. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified doctor of naturopathy. Excited to be teaching you the scientifically proven best time to go to bed. Now, if you do this, you're going to end up with more energy, less brain fog, and wake up naturally, which means better mood, increased focus, increased increase mental cognition, much better overall health. Now, a lot of people will try to say to you, there is no one best time to go to bed. Uh, it's really based on bioindividuality. And to be honest, I'm a big believer in bioindividuality. I believe that everyone is unique. However, we are also all human. That means there are also foundational-based protocols and foundational-based structures to the human body that aren't meant to change. And I'll tell you right now that anybody who says, oh, two o'clock is the normal bedtime in the morning, trust me, it's not. I went to bed at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock for many years, and my health suffered. It wasn't as good as it could be. Now, not everyone needs to go to bed as early as I'm going to talk about here today, but I can tell you it's when the human body was meant to go to bed. And we can see this through neuroscience now and actual labs that I'm gonna show you as there is one best time to go to bed. Now there's a nice little window that you'll be able to fall into, but that's what I wanna share with you here today. And again, anybody who believes that night owls are a real thing, I get it, I understand. Some people love to do their best work at that time. It's quiet at that time. They might be in college, I understand that. However, as you start to get older, you really wanna find yourself moving into this sweet spot for that best time to go to bed because it's gonna help with aging, it's gonna help with dementia, it's gonna help with Alzheimer's, it's gonna help with focus, it's gonna help with hormones uh, like testosterone and balanced levels of estrogen and progesterone, and it's gonna help with cortisol, that stress hormone as well. All right, so again, anybody who doesn't believe it, trust me, go into nature, go camping for a couple weeks, you will automatically fall into this natural best time to go to sleep because as humans, the only way we get around it is with lights and living inside, but I'm gonna show you right now. So. This is a picture that I've actually, I put inside my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. So if you've seen it before, if it looks familiar, well, that's why. So what it is, is it shows you on this black line right here, cortisol during the day. Now you can see the sun starts to rise right here, right? This is between like six and 8 p.m. Six, sorry, six and 8 a.m. Six and 8 a.m. between that time frame is the ideal time for the human body to wake up, okay? Ideal time for the human body to wake up, 6 to 8 a.m. I'll talk about that on another show. There's something called the cortisol awakening response. Thyroid hormone starts to spike. Testosterone starts to spike. Cortisol begins to spike. These are natural processes. They naturally wake us up. Now, what happens when we get these hormones, these positive hormones moving up in the morning between 6 and 8? Well, melatonin then, which is the sleep hormone, begins to go down during the day. Now, the problem is I used to have Addison's disease. Some people with Addison's disease or low morning cortisol, they feel like zombies all morning. They literally never wake up because cortisol doesn't begin to rise. So melatonin, which is an inverse hormone to cortisol, doesn't necessarily begin to fall. That's a big issue, okay? So that's why all of this needs to be corrected. Now, you'll see though cortisol begins to fall during the day. And this is very interesting, why? Because humans get that big surge in the morning and then just gradually throughout the day, as the sun begins to set as well, our, our cortisol begins to go lower. Well, lo and behold, when cortisol begins to drop naturally, right, what happens? Well, melatonin then begins to increase. Okay, that's the red line right here. That's melatonin. Now, what's the sweet spot, though, for your lowest point in cortisol? Now, remember, your lowest point in cortisol is the lowest level of energy you will have for the day lowest drop in stress hormones, and when melatonin will begin to ramp back up or ramp up for the evening. And this is denoted as the evening because we are diurnal creatures, right? We are up during the day and we're asleep at night. Asleep during the dark hours, up during the light. Why? Because we're not nocturnal. We don't have nocturnal vision. We're not prey-based hunters where we're hunting other uh, animals and things like that during the middle of the night. We would be prey as humans during the middle of the night. We are meant to find shelter and be away, right? Be away from all harm when we can't see at night, right? Like a cat. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, on a hormone-based lab, you can see between six and nine right here is the highest spike in uh, cortisol. And that's exactly where you want to be. 
You want to be elevated. This is a saliva hormone test. Anybody can run this lab right at home. Uh, I will link that up below as to where to find it. But again, you can always find these labs at equi.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs. And I say that because they are now open source. You don't need to ask your doctor to check your cortisol levels because and remember, if they're down here in the morning, what's, good, what's that mean? If you have low cortisol in the morning, that means you have brain fog, no energy, low mood, you're cranky. You need a lot of caffeine to try to spike that cortisol, but you want it naturally. And then you can see it just start to normally fall throughout the day as to this point, one point right here, all right? Now, I didn't go back to that right here, but here it is. There's one point. Here's 9 p.m., okay? Here's 10 p.m. Where's the lowest point of cortisol? 9.30 p.m. So the ideal time to go to bed is between 9.30 and 10 at the latest. So somewhere between 9 and 10 p.m. Why? And they talked about this in Ayurvedic medicine. 6,000 years ago, after 10 p.m., what happens? The body can start to get a second wind. And I know for myself, if I go to bed past 10.30, it's even more difficult to fall asleep than if I were to actually go to bed at 9.30 to 10. I found the sweet spot for me. 9 o'clock is just too early. I've got two young daughters. I need a little time for myself, a little time with my wife. So we found that between 9.30 and 10 is really that sweet spot. And I think you'll find the same, that if you begin to follow this natural human rhythm, well, now you're going to be able to wake up at 6 a.m. You're going to have more time in the morning to yourself before you even need to go to work or for the family. And that'll be your quiet time as well. So here's the lab right here. And you can actually see, this is many people in my practice, many, many people. They've got normal cortisol and all of a sudden at night, they're out of range. Okay, you can see it. Look at this right here. This is their evening cortisol. This is a uh, stress hormones, mood metabolism test. Look at that, it's a 0.9. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're going to get a higher cortisol at spike, uh, spike at night. They're gonna end up having difficulty falling asleep, difficulty turning the mind off, difficulty relaxing. It, again, this doesn't mean that it's normal for this person to stay up later. It means they have a dysfunctional diurnal rhythm. It means they're not producing enough cortisol earlier in the day, and they're producing more at night. We need to reverse that, and we can. We can reverse that through beginning to rebalance what's called the HPA axis. Again, I'll teach that in a different video, and also using all natural sleep-based protocols, and I'll link those up uh, for you as well. So below this video will be the natural sleep protocols. I will link up this lab if you're interested in running this lab. But remember, there's always an answer. Remember, there's always an answer. You're able to figure out what's wrong with you in terms of health, why your body can't lose the weight, why you can't sleep, why it's aging faster. Remember, there's always an answer. You'll be able to figure it out. Hopefully this video was helpful. And again, let me know what you thought in the comments below. And of course, uh, I'll be teaching in the future how to work back your bedtime slowly because I know you can't go from 1 a.m. to 10 p.m. all at one time. So I'll teach that in the future. Stay tuned and take care.